Uh, so you are in Bani Walid now? No, I'm not in Bani Walid. When did you leave? I left Bani Walid before, I think, four days. Oh, um, four days ago. Four days ago you left. Well, what is the situ what is the situation now? It's very bad. Where are the people from Bani Walid? Where have they gone? You can look in this film. On this video? Yes. Well, th w these people are trying to go where? Where are they going, these people? No, to come back to, to him house. But this militia wants the Warfaland, Bani Walid people as Taurga, you know? They, they don't, they won't let the Bani Walid people back into Bani Walid? Yes. Where, where do they expect them to go? I don't know. Really, I don't know. So they don't, they want Bani Walid to be like Tawerga or Search, they just want it destroyed? Yes, because the, the house is destructed, yeah? You know? Everything, everything is done. So, so why are the people trying to go back? Why do they want to go back when there is nothing there, no houses? My earth, you know. It, it is their land, where yes. they. My city, my earth. Yes. My memory, you know. Did you take this video? No, but my friend sent to me. Uh -huh. My friend is taking yes, and he's talking by Arabic uh, for the data and for everything. I'm going to talk to the NATO. Uh, you said that you are coming here to Libya to, to protect the, the civilians, but the truth, you are attacking the civilians. So what? And you are make this as a reason, to, as a cover, to do ever what you want under it. So I want to say for you, do ever what you want. And the funny thing, you are saying for our leader, Muammar Gaddafi, to go out. We're out. Muammar Gaddafi, in every heart of Libyan people, if you want him to go out, you should go for every heart and take it. Muammar Gaddafi from them. So we are with our leader, Muammar Gaddafi, and we will never give up from him. You pumping us because you think we will give up and we will scare you or afraid of. But you are wrong. We are with our leader, Muammar Gaddafi. Do ever what you want, but you are still with him. And honor, safe and clean. And uh, also, shame on your Arab government, especially Qatar and Emirates. What is, what is it all for? Is it for money? Is it for oil? How would you face Allah with it? And the, uh, aren't we used to be brothers, uh, help each other at our bad times? Finally, the, we want to accept but the green flag on the top of our great Jamahriya. And uh, if you want it our, we are ready to make it our, but believe me, you're not. Thank you. I want uh, to say somewhere this... Uh, uh, two people didn't uh, know until now what happening here in our country. I am actually all these things that happening from Zionist planning and uh, some people uh, disloyalty. Uh, the aim is of uh, all these things. They want firstly uh, maybe divided our country to parties. Secondly, they want to. Uh, Re relieve our religions, Islam. Uh, thirdly, they won't invade our oil, maybe, and our tradition. Hello, everyone. Welcome to GGN. Today is Thursday, October 25th, 2012. I'm Darko. So a lot is happening right now in the world, and um, one of the things that is just not being covered enough in the West is what's happening in Bani Walid in Libya. The first video that I showed was from Morris uh, 108 Morris 108. Uh, he has a great channel. I recommend to go check it out. He gets a good, um, a good coverage from people that are in that area. Know people from that area. This was an older video, but it was real Libyan speaking of their feelings towards Gaddafi. Of course, at that time, he was alive. So, but it says here 600 killed in Bani Walid fighting in one day. Says sources. It says here the Libyan pro-government forces drive through the streets of Bani Walid on the 24th after seizing control of the city. Also, it says, amid conflicting reports that the city uh, was captured by army forces, RT has learned that 600 people were allegedly killed in Wednesday's fighting and over 1,000 have been hospitalized. Locals are appealing for international aid. It says Lib Libyan officials claim that the government forces conducted a 20-day siege before capturing Bani Walid, the last stronghold for supporters of Gaddafi. 
says uh, and seized the city. Sources in the town gave conflicting reports saying that local militias were responsible for the siege and now control the area. They continue to receive conflicting reports from sources on the ground. They're hearing that the army is withdrawing from the city, although we're hearing of widespread killings. When asked why the West is ignoring the massacre in Baniwali, the U.S. State, uh, U.S. Department of State spokesman told RT that Washington is watching the situation very closely while its position or its position on the situation remains absolutely clear, which is they're going to absolutely do nothing and uh, let this happen. They also said, we support the efforts of the Libyan puppet regime that the West imposed to get control of the militias and terrorists and to provide security throughout the country, including Bani Walid, and to do so in this way that is respectful of human rights of all citizens and allows humanitarian organizations to get in. So you can see all those people just sitting out there in the desert with their cars with nowhere to go. So it's very humanitarian, isn't it? I've covered this before. The fact is, is that the people that um, uh, supported the Jamaa Haria and Gaddafi are being targeted by um, by these militias that were in the east, and uh, were also funneling weapons and terrorists in to wreak havoc on those cities, including Sirte. So what I'm saying is that the West, they're uh, absolutely clear in their mission, which is they're going to uh, let this um, genocide or whatever it is uh, occur until all of the anti-West support leaves the country. Of course, what they're going to do is, is they've got to maintain it so that they don't let the extremists that they're supporting get control as well. Libyan militia takes former Gaddafi stronghold. So there you go. Libya's government declared Wednesday that it has taken control of that one of the last strongholds. The capturing of the city was a triumph for the government that replaced Gaddafi's regime. So who did it? We don't know. Mil militias, government. But just leaving off with this uh, situation... Um, I just covered yesterday an article that said that basically the government, um, the, the citizens in Baniwali were getting attacked a lot, like I said, from people in the eastern Libya, um, and they were also getting support from overseas. But they kept wreaking havoc on the city, and you'd think that the government would go in and help Baniwali, but instead what they did was they go in there and they helped the militia and the, and the terrorists um, that were already in there that they admitted, and then they went in there and they just evacuated the entire uh, town. So... I know I sound like I'm reiterating, um, but uh, I just want to make sure that this situation is clear to my viewers and stuff like that. Libyan humanitarian catastrophe ignored by Western media. So as violence continues on the 21st day, Western media outlets appear interested in reporting on what are some calling a humanitarian catastrophe. The silence is a far cry from the situation last year when Gaddafi's forces made front page news says here that uh, journalist and author Neil Clark told RT the situation is much worse. The number of people killed since NATO intervened has gone up by 10 to 20 times. We've got massacres going on at the moment, and there's complete silence in the U.K. and the U.S. Egypt catches armed smugglers near Libyan border. So it says here, remember I was talking about Libya was a smuggling border now for terrorists and arms, and that the uh, agency... You know which one I'm talking about is there to monitor it and manage the distribution of these arms into the hands of these Islamic uh, extremists. Also, you have what Delta Force and Marines in Libya as well, so they're there, but they're just allowing it to happen. Kind of like when Gaddafi was slain, you saw people, an actual NATO soldier, standing by as they let all of these um, other sects from other um, from other parts of Libya um, beat on them and stuff like that. There was a NATO soldier standing tall, armed watching and overseeing the entire thing which is kind of what is happening with Turkey and Syria you, uh, I covered an article I looked I tried looking for it today I just couldn't find it but it's not a surprise right but I did cover it and it was that there was a Turkish general Turkish army taking over the free Syrian army so they're overseeing they're arming them they the terrorists were seen by journalists from Lebanon going and picking up weapons and being rearmed over the border in Turkey by the Turkish military and that, and then sending the uh, the rebels, which include Al-Qaeda, back into Syria to hit government forces. So you see, as long as there's instability uh, in Libya, then the West has a nice uh, state for smuggling, a smuggling state. Little is known in the last news for Libya, Benghazi attack suspect killed in Cairo gun battle. So Tunisia holding another suspect related to the attack on the U.S. consulate. So little is known about this suspect who had a shootout uh, with the police or authorities in Egypt. The U.S. claims he has links to unspecified terrorist organizations, i.e. could have been working for the agencies themselves, right? They're killing an asset, taking them out. 
Uh, Harzai apparently posted information regarding the attack online shortly thereafter and was trying to sneak into Syria after his flight to Turkey, hmm. likely hoping to blend into the various Sunni rebel groups fighting in that country's civil war. Again, I don't like calling it a civil war. It's an invasion to get a regime change. NATO using al-Qaeda rat lines to flood Syria with foreign terrorists. So just talking about that, 2007-2008 U.S. West Point reports reveal al-Qaeda network behind NATO's so-called freedom fighters. Extremists in Syria were behind Iraq war foreign terrorist influx, not Syrian government. So, the discredited and now obscure defected Syrian ambassador has claimed mid-summer of 2012 that the Syrian government has been behind the influx of foreign terrorists that entered Iraq during the later phases of the U.S.-British occupation. These terrorists took part in campaigns of sectarian-driven violence that divided and destroyed an already devastated Iraq, just like Libya. So, Ferris spectacularly claimed that he himself was involved in organizing the terrorist death squads in a ham-handed attempt to implicate the government of President Assad. What Ferris actually revealed, however, was an invisible state within Syria, one composed of Saudi-aligned sectarian extremism, operating not only independently of the government of Assad, but in violent opposition to it. This state within a state also so happens to be directly affiliated with al-Qaeda and the Muslim Brotherhood, the leading forces now fighting in Syria with significant Western backing against the Syrian government. So this is the document, the West Point, um, U.S. Army's West Point Combating Terrorism Center, CTC, two reports published between 07 and 08, revealing the global network of al-Qaeda affiliated terror or terrorist organizations in Iraq. So there you go, the Harmony Project. This exact network can now be seen demonstrably at work with NATO support overrunning Libya and now Syria. And this is what I was talking about when I was referring to Eastern Libya and Bani Walid, the terrorists in Eastern Libya, city of Benghazi, that U.S. Ambassador Stevens was arming, is described by 2007 West Point report as one of the most prolific and notorious al-Qaeda subsidiaries in the world. Libya, despite its relatively small population, came in second overall, producing foreign fighters to wage sectarian war in Iraq. Libya exceeded all other nations per capita in producing foreign fighters, including al-Qaeda's primary patrons, Saudi Arabia. It's crazy, too, because you hear about those things about, ooh, how Gaddafi was colluding with the CIA. Well, he was trying to keep these terrorists out of his country, or at least keep them at bay. And what happened was when the peaceful protests, the, quote, peaceful protests spilled over into Libya, and they started attacking Arms Depot and wreaking havoc, and, and, uh, and violence ensued. What happened? The, uh, the rebels busted out their terrorist buddies. That's right. So here you go. Here's a little map right here of the most prominent routes into Syria for foreign fighters. So this is the same networks are now being used with the addition of more prominent role for Turkey to target Syria directly. And speaking of Turkey, U.S. deploys troops to Turkey amid Syria unrest, says U.S. General. The commanding general of the U.S. Army Europe says Pentagon has recently sent a number of American soldiers to Turkey in a bid to assist Ankara in handling the spillover of the Syrian crisis. That's what they like to call it, right? We have relatively few number of U.S. Army Euro Europe personnel in Turkey recently. I was just about to say CIA, of course, and then they said, what? Some of that has been sharing intelligence. So He noted that Turkey is concerned about how to handle the humanitarian crisis on its border with Syria. Well, you can stop arming the freaking terrorists. That's how you can start, right? See, now they're concerned about the approach of winter. Hmm. Well, it's a little too late for that, man. You already have thousands of people that have uh, left. So it says here that if uh, Turkey asks for cooperation, American soldiers could be used in evacuation operations. However, no request has been yet made yet by Turkey. So they're talking about rights to protect uh, R2P, declaring a humanitarian corridor, no-fly zone, which is what they want. It's all part of the Brookings Institute for Regime Change. I've covered this before. Turkey is a NATO country, and someone made a good point. What sort of double-talk deceit is this? The USA has had a large number of personnel in Turkey for quite some time. They have troops manning the MDS. They have Marines guarding their airfield assets in Turkey. Thousands of U.S. troops are permanently stationed in Turkey, not unlike Korea. So really, uh, what is this crap all about? I remember seeing a comment, too, about someone that said that they lived in Turkey, and they said that the, the Turkish Army and Navy, they, they try to be just like and emulate the U.S. because they're immersed with them so much, so... Again, just uh, smoke and mirrors. Most people don't understand this or know about it, so that's news to them. So shelling from Syria falls inside North Lebanon. 
So they say, you know, so many people of Lebanon have been wounded from the Syrian shelling. Well, is it? Sir Actually, it's the insurgents, the terrorists. Syrian forces repel insurgents on Lebanese border, push back a number of armed militants trying to sneak across the border. So they sneak attack, and then they, they head back. Please join me in part two. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.